Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to Cisco Secure Application in Splunk App Dynamics. First, I want to give you a brief introduction into what Cisco Secure Application is, and then we can take a look at the tool inside of App Dynamics. It is essentially a security agent that's bundled with existing Splunk App Dynamics APM agents that you deploy to your application infrastructure. So when you instrument your application with a supported version of the Splunk App Dynamics APM agent, Cisco Secure Application will perform continuous security scanning in your runtime environment, and it will do vulnerability assessments and prevent possible exploits. And there are currently three APM agents that support Cisco Secure Application features, and those are the Java agent, .NET Core, and Node.js agent. So if we take a look at the components of Cisco Secure Application, it includes the Splunk AppDynamics APM agent and also the Splunk AppDynamics controller. And then the final component is the Cisco Secure Application dashboard that you can find in Splunk AppDynamics. And this allows you to visualize security events and data about your applications. And to better understand it, it's helpful to take a look at the high-level architecture. So over here you have your infrastructure, and on that infrastructure you're deploying your application as well as the Splunk App Dynamics APM agents that are bundled with Cisco Secure Application. And once you've deployed your APM managed application and that's running, the APM agent will retrieve data and send it to the App Dynamics controller. Now once data is sent to the controller, Cisco Secure Application then retrieves uh, data like application tiers and nodes from the controller. Now the Cisco Secure Application Service controls whether or not the security features are enabled for a given application. And so the APM agent communicates with the service to check whether or not the security features are enabled for that application that the agent is deployed uh, and instrumented for. And if the security features are enabled for that application, then the agent will download the security configuration along with the policies from the Cisco Secure Application Service. And based on those policies, the agent will then send relevant security events to the Cisco Secure Application Service. And then finally, the service will display all of the data on the Cisco Secure Application Dashboard. Now what I'll be focusing primarily on in this video is exploring the Cisco Secure Application Dashboard. I won't be going over the configuration and setup of Cisco Secure Application. So with that, let's navigate over to App Dynamics. Now there's a couple of ways that I can get to Cisco Secure Application in App Dynamics. The first method would be to select security in the left-hand side menu. Another way that I can access Cisco Secure Application is directly through an application. I'll select applications from the left-hand side menu and then select an application. This brings me to the application dashboard where I can see the flow map of my application. If I navigate over to the metric sidebar and scroll down, I can see a security health panel for my application. This security health panel gives me some high level metrics about the security posture of my application, including a business risk score, real time vulnerability assessment, and attacks that have occurred within the last hour. If I wanna access the Cisco Secure Application Dashboard, I can select security health. This page provides an overview of the security of a selected application. And on this page, you can view security details for business transactions, vulnerabilities, attacks, and applications. And what you'll notice above overview is that we're currently filtering the data based on application, and all of the data is filtered on the AD Financial Next application. We can also further filter by the tier within that application. or if we would like to see security data across all of our applications, we can simply hit reset. From here, let's navigate to the applications page. The application page focuses on the current state of security capabilities across applications, tiers, and nodes. 
You can control security settings from this drop down here, but you'll notice that it's grayed out for me because I do not have the permissions to control the security settings. So in this nodes panel, you have a categorization of nodes. Active nodes are those that have the APM agent deployed to them and they are registered with the AppDynamics controller. The number of supported nodes means this is the number of nodes that have a version of the APM agent installed that supports Cisco secure application features. The number of ready nodes are the nodes that are actively sending heartbeats to the Cisco secure application service. And the number of enabled nodes are ready nodes that have the security setting uh, value set to enabled. And then finally, you have secured nodes, which are enabled nodes that are actively sending security insights to the Cisco secure application service. And ideally, you would want the number of secured nodes to match the number of active nodes. In the applications table, I can click a specific row to get more detailed information about a specific application. So I get the nodes panel as well as a tier table breaking down the security posture by tier. Now what you'll notice in the security setting column, the value is set to inherit for uh, this tier. And what that means is that the security setting is inherited from the parent application. If this was set to inherit at the application level as well, then the security setting is inherited from the AppDynamics controller. Now let's take a look at the business transactions page. This page allows you to monitor the vulnerability risk of a business transaction. So Cisco Secure Application evaluates the risk of a business transaction using an algorithm that factors in exposure to the internet, access to potentially sensitive data, usage of vulnerable libraries, reached vulnerable code, prediction of vulnerability exploitation, unsafe external APIs, and runtime threat activity. So at the top of the page, we get some high-level metrics like business transactions by risk status uh, and the daily highest business risk score detected. We also get a top recommended actions panel, which will tell you the remediations that will bring your business risk score uh, down the most. Let's take a look at the business transaction table. You have the name of the business transaction that includes a hyperlink to the flow map of that business transaction. And you can do the same for the application column as well, navigating directly to the flow map of the application. The number next to the application name represents the number of tiers in that application. And then the entry tier is the tier from which the transaction originates. And this also hyperlinks directly to the flow map for that specific tier. And then next to the entry tier, we have the business risk score. And this score is calculated based on the likelihood of vulnerability exploitation, as well as the impact of the potential exploitation in a business transaction. Any score above 670 is considered critical, and it goes up to 1,000. And for this business transaction, we can see the total number of vulnerabilities associated with it, as well as the total number of attacks that have either been exploited, blocked, or attempted. Now, if I select this business transaction row, I can view additional details about this transaction. And as you can see in the details panel, I get a breakdown of what the business risk score is composed of. I can also see that score over time, as well as the top recommended actions to remediate that score. If I scroll down, I can see the specific vulnerabilities associated with this transaction, as well as the attacks that have occurred. So the title will specify the vulnerability type. We get the ID of the vulnerability, as well as a Cisco security risk score. And this score provides an estimate of exploitation based on real-time events. A red score will be anything above a value of 66, and it goes up to 100. If there's an exclamation mark in this column, it means that the vulnerable code has been reached. This CVSS score is based on the common vulnerability scoring system. And then the tier column specifies the services or the tiers that are affected because of the selected vulnerability. This also includes the number of affected nodes within that tier. And I can navigate directly to the flow map of this tier by selecting the tier icon. The library column specifies the library that's affected because of this vulnerability. And I can select this specific library to learn more about it. So in the overview panel, it gives me a summary of the library as well as the vulnerability and a remediation. I like this page because it also specifies the affected tiers and the affected nodes.
it's good to be able to see the specific infrastructure that's exposed to this vulnerability. I'm going to navigate back to the transaction page. And in this last column, you'll see the status of the vulnerability. Here it's specified as detected, which means at least one vulnerability is detected in the library. It could also be confirmed, which means it was manually set by a user after review, or it could be fixed, ignored, or not vulnerable. Now for this particular transaction, there were no attacks, but I would like to see a transaction with attacks. So I'm going to navigate back to business transactions, and I'm going to select the checkout transaction, which has 65 total attacks. And then I'll select the attacks tab. The attacks table gives me some information about the attack, including an ID, the outcome, which can be attempted, exploited, or blocked. It can also be observed, and that's when the event may impact the security, but any malicious intent is not determined. If it was blocked, it means that it was blocked based on the attack policy, and exploited means that malicious activity has been performed to impact the application's security. If an attack was attempted, it means that malicious activity is determined, but not exploited. And on the attack type column, you get the type of event as well as the number of events associated with that type. So for instance, you can see this remote code execution attack that was blocked and it was trying to cat the Etsy password file. The tier column specifies the affected tier as well as the last time it was detected and the current status of the attack. The API findings tab identifies vulnerabilities associated with the API using Panoptica findings. And those can include security configuration, open ports, vulnerability, TLS version, and missing required headers. And in the details panel, I can see a specific occurrence of the finding. Now from here, let's navigate over to the libraries page. The libraries page provides a list of all libraries that are in use by the corresponding applications. And it highlights the vulnerabilities and associated risks introduced by the use of those libraries. And if you need to, you can utilize the search bar to search by various dimensions. I can select a row here to see more detailed information about that specific library. In the details, you can also identify the file path of this library. We also get the scores for this particular library, as well as the number of uh, vulnerabilities by severity. And if I want to see the specific vulnerabilities that are associated with this library, I can scroll down and I'll see a table of each of the vulnerabilities. And notice for this remote code execution vulnerability, it has an exclamation mark under the reached column, meaning that uh, this section of code was reached within the last seven days. If I want to look at the details of this specific vulnerability, I can select the hyperlinked ID of it. And this takes me to the overview page of this specific vulnerability. I'm going to navigate to the vulnerabilities overview page. The vulnerabilities page displays the list of all the scanned vulnerabilities. An application registered with Cisco Secure Application is scanned and continuously monitored for vulnerabilities. And when vulnerabilities are detected, a user with configure permission can prioritize vulnerabilities. And on this page, we can see some high-level metrics like vulnerabilities by severity, the severity trend, and days since first detected. At the bottom, we have a table of all vulnerabilities. And if we'd like to get more details, we can simply select the ID of a specific vulnerability to get those details. Now let's take a look at the attacks page. This page includes details of all the open and closed attacks on the managed applications. And at the top of the page, we get some high level metrics like attacks by outcome, the top applications, and the top attack types. And if I scroll down, I can see a table of all of the attacks that have occurred. This table includes information like the ID of the attack, the outcome, which would be exploited, blocked, or attempted, the attack type plus the number of events associated with that attack type, and then the event trigger. The event trigger is relevant information from the runtime behavior resulting from the event where secure application determined a potential attack. We can also see the application, 
business transaction, and tiers associated with the attack. I can select a specific row to see more details about an attack. Let's take a look at this remote code execution that attempted to perform a cat Etsy password. In the summary, it gives me some high-level details about the attack. And if I want to look at a specific event's details, I can select an event from the events tab. So you can get a lot of information from this event details panel, including the stack trace for the corresponding event. And the policy for this attack was set to block. The data that's provided on this panel should help you identify ways to remediate this issue and potentially prevent uh, further attacks from occurring. Now let's take a look at the observations page. The observations page describes the runtime events that don't violate a policy or they're not considered to be an attack. So these could be normal runtime behavior where the events may impact the security but any malicious intent isn't determined. So at the top of the page, we get some high-level metrics like top applications by number of observations, as well as the top event types. And if I scroll down, I can see a table of all of the observations. And the table includes the ID of the observation, as well as the source, which can be unknown, external, or internal as well as the observation type and the number of events associated with that observation type. And we can also see the application and the tier associated with that uh, observation event. Now there's a few features I'd like to call out before concluding the overview of the Cisco Secure Application dashboard. Cisco Secure Application runtime policies define what runtime behaviors to ignore, detect, or block. For instance, we saw the remote code execution attack that had been blocked that was trying to cat the Etsy password file. It was blocked because of the runtime policy that was set. And you can create and configure runtime policies to specify an action to mitigate the attacks and vulnerabilities. And to create policies, it requires that you have configure permission for Cisco Secure Application. I also want to mention the alerts feature, which allows you to configure email and HTTP-based alerts. We'll take a look at alerts and policies in another video. I'll include relevant links to the Cisco Secure Application documentation in the video description below. If you want to review what we covered today, check out my colleague Caitlin Holla's blog. I've linked it in the description. I've also included links to official documentation if you want to explore more details. And if you're looking for instructions on how to get a Cisco Secure Application license, you'll find them in the description as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching.